Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is the Faisal TT15 Mark II. Not just the best tabletop tripod I've tested, but my favourite tripod of any size. And in this video, I'll show you how it could change the way you support your camera. I bought the TT15 Mark II three years ago and use it almost every day whether I'm shooting stills or videos. In fact, when you see a low angle on any of my product reviews, it was shot with a camera on the TT15, and most of my vlogging clips also use it as a handle. Now, at around $70 or euros, it's not exactly cheap, but I haven't found anything as stable for the money, and it's allowed me to take shots or film video in situations which were difficult or even impossible with a full-size tripod. For example, my first experience with the TT15 was at the Top of the Rock observation deck in New York, where full-size tripods are banned. No problem perching a tabletop tripod on the ledge though. Here I used the Mark 1 model with a ball head supporting a Sony mirrorless camera on an L bracket, but later realised I could achieve everything I wanted by either mounting a clamp or simply just the camera itself directly to the legs and adjusting their angle to level the composition. Here's two night shots of Manhattan with the TT15. On the left is that Empire State Building shot from the top of the rock, where again larger tripods are banned, and on the right from a bridge on the High Line. Perching a tabletop tripod on a ledge makes it easy to grab city views at night and it means you can use nice low ISO sensitivities with long exposures for lovely clean results. Here's another example, this time with a fireworks display at Niagara Falls from the Ontario side. The crowds meant I was unable to use a standard sized tripod so instead I mounted a small Lumix LX10 or LX15 camera to the TT15 Mark II, slipped it through the railings at ground level and just crouched down to grab the shots. Here, the compact size of the TT15 Mark II allowed me to squeeze it and my Olympus OMD EM1 through some railings on Treasure Island for a view looking back at San Francisco and the Bay Bridge. But the compact size doesn't just provide stability in places where normal stands are awkward, frowned upon or even banned. Most importantly, it means you'll rarely, if ever, leave it at home. To paraphrase Chase Jarvis, the best tripod is the one you have with you, and that's the basic appeal behind any tabletop model. They're small and light enough to be thrown in a bag without a second thought, unlike a full-size tripod which can often feel like an imposition, especially on family holidays or days out. I invested in a Gitzo Traveller for convenience, and don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this, but while it's small and light for a full-size tripod, it's a giant compared to the TT15, and it only comes out with me when I know I'll absolutely need it. In contrast, the TT15 never leaves my bag, so it's always available. The Faisal TT15 Mark II looks almost identical to the earlier Mark I model, with both resembling miniaturised versions of high-end tripod legs from the likes of Gitzo or Really Right Stuff. The TT15 Mark II weighs just 180 grams or 0.4 pounds and measures 16 centimeters or 6.2 inches when folded down, yet can handle impressive loads up to 8 kilograms or 18 pounds. The anodized aluminium frame, carbon fibre legs and rubber feet are all weather sealed and can be used in saltwater environments. It really is like having a high-end tripod but in lightweight tabletop form. The upper frame is made from a solid block of CNC milled aluminium with a 30mm diameter base. A standard quarter inch threaded screw in the centre of the base spins freely and is tightened under the frame using a wide slotted head. You can use a small coin to turn the screw or hold it in place quite effectively with your thumb as you turn the entire tripod or the camera or head above it. A 3 8 inch adapter is also supplied allowing you to mount a head or a larger camera. The free spinning screw is different from the original TT15 Mark I seen here where the screw was actually fixed in place forcing you to spin the entire tripod to screw it into the base of a camera or head. Now that sounds messy but to be honest I actually preferred this early approach as I could easily rotate the tripod to screw it into a camera or head. Now with the Mark II I need to consciously hold the tripod against the camera or head before then turning the screw with a coin on my finger. I don't find it as quick or convenient but some people may prefer it or probably won't even think about it if they haven't used the Mark I. I think the best solution would have been one of those screws with a small folding D-shaped handle you find on many quick release plates rather than having to find a small coin for a really tight fit. The upper sections of each leg are also made of aluminium and like the main frame are anodized for resistance to corrosion. The hinges between the upper legs and the main frame can also be adjusted for tightness using a supplied Allen key. A spring-loaded ratchet design allows the legs to angle out and stay locked at one of three positions, 25, 50 and 75 degrees. The lowest position is new to the Mark II and allows the top of the tripod frame to be positioned just 5.3cm above the ground. 
Previously on the Mark 1 version, you only had two lockable angles, so for anything lower, you need to rely on the friction of the joints, which would unsurprisingly slip for heavier loads. The legs themselves are simple, non-extendable carbon fibre rods. This is in contrast to some tabletop or smaller tripods, which attempt to pack in multiple sections for the perceived benefit of greater height, but invariably at the cost of stability. After all, the outer legs are so thin to start with, the internal sections need to be thinner still, with the end result being a wobbly tripod, which to me is pretty useless. So while the TT15 is never going to be as tall as most rivals, it more than makes up for it with superior stability. At the end of each leg is a substantial rubber foot which prevents the tripod from slipping. I've had mine perched in some rather precarious positions and it's held solid. Here's the TT15 Mark II supporting a Fujifilm X-Pro2 mirrorless camera mounted directly without a head. In both examples here I'm shooting long exposures with a Lee 75 filter system on the left on the shore of Lake Bled and on the right using the rubber feet to grip a boulder. And here's that shot I took of Slovenia's Lake Bled with a long exposure using the Fujifilm X-Pro2 mounted directly onto the TT15 Mark II legs with no head. This is an extremely stable configuration. With the legs angled out and locked at the first 25 degree position, the maximum height becomes 14.5 cm or 5.67 inches. I'd say in this position the TT15 Mark II is only really comfortable with small to medium weights like compact cameras, phones or smaller mirrorless cameras. If you have a DSLR or a larger mirrorless camera, or don't need the maximum height, I'd recommend opening the legs out to the middle 50 degree position, at which point the TT15 Mark II becomes extremely stable and very confident. Even more so if you open the legs out further to the widest and lowest 75 degree position. It's these 50 and 75 degree positions that I use the most, and I only deploy the first position when I really need the maximum possible height. Here's the TT15 Mark II supporting an Olympus OMD EM1 mirrorless camera on Baker Beach in San Francisco, mounted directly using an L bracket and a clamp screwed straight into the legs. There's no need for a head here and the high end construction happily dealt with the salt water lapping at its feet. While I mostly shoot with mirrorless cameras, the TT15 Mark II is also happy to support larger DSLRs. Here it is looking back at Toronto, mounted directly to a Canon EOS 80D and an EFS 18-135 USM lens, balancing on a boulder. I've also used it successfully with heavier models including the EOS 5D Mark IV and Nikon D500, both equipped with medium sized zooms. I've even pushed my luck with larger zooms using tripod collars and found it really can hold several kilograms with confidence, again so long as you're using the 50 or 75 degree leg positions. Unlike many cheaper tabletop tripods, the TT15 doesn't include a head, whether built in or detachable. In line with other high-end tripod legs, it simply offers a screw fitting onto which you can mount whatever you like. Now most buyers naturally think of fitting a small ball head to the TT15, and Faisal suggests its own CB30D, but doing so will of course increase the overall size and weight, not to mention raising the centre of gravity and rendering it less stable than before. I initially fitted my first TT15 with a small ball head, but soon found it actually wasn't necessary for most of my shots. Before long I discovered I could simply mount the tripod legs directly to the base of a camera and simply adjust their angle slightly to level it where necessary, with the hinge friction actually holding all but the heaviest loads in place. When I want to shoot in the vertical orientation, I found the most compact and stable solution is again to dispense with a ball head and instead just screw a quick release clamp directly to the legs, then fit the camera into it using an L bracket. I use a Mac 14 clamp and a DPL 02R L bracket both from Sunway Photo and both of those I bought from B&H. If you want a rotating platform for panoramas but again don't need the full adjustment or height of a bore head, check out Faisal's PB70. The TT15 also makes a great stand for phones coupled with a suitable clamp. I use a Wu Hoto clamp with 360 degree rotation and a handy cold shoe for mounting accessories. I put links to all of these accessories in the description. Some may initially mark the TT15 down for not having a built-in ball head nor extending legs, but both are important factors in the overall stability of the product. Indeed, they differentiate it from cheaper tabletop tripods in a very positive way and contribute to my overall preference for it. Ultimately, if you only need to support a compact camera, a phone or a small mirrorless camera for simple shots, then you can definitely get away with cheaper models like the Manfrotto Pixie or the smaller Gorillapods. 
But if you want to support a larger, heavier camera, or if you're filming video, or perhaps shooting long exposures, then you'll really appreciate the extra stability of the Faisal TT15 Mark II. And while it is expensive compared to budget tabletop tripods, it's comfortably cheaper than the likes of the really right stuff pocket pod. Three years on, it remains my most used camera accessory and one I'd buy again in an instant. If I've convinced you, there's links to check prices or order a TT15 in the description, while those in the UK or mainland Europe can order direct from the Faisal website. I'd also love to hear what mini tripods are your personal favourites, so let me know what you're all using in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.